Maria Moreno. I am a research scientist at Yale University. I also am a lecturer. I teach uh, biology laboratory courses for students that are graduating in biology. Hi, I am Lisa Anwar. I'm one of the team leaders for Paris Foods and we are using bay leaves as natural food preservatives to keep bugs away from food and to prolong shelf life of foods such as flour, rice, and sugar. Um, throughout all your years as a biologist, have you ever heard of anything such as natural food preservatives? I guess not as a biologist, but I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm originally from Bogota, Colombia. And in our culture, people do use herbs as a way to keep insects away from food. So like in my house, my mom always had a sachet of lavender seeds that she um, infused with lavender oil. And that kept moths away in the pantry, for example. And it was traditional practice that if you bought flour in bulk, you would make, again, a sachet of bay leaves, the whole leaf, and you would put it on like the other side of the top of the container, and that would also keep insects away. So it's, it's I guess it was more of like a cultural thing that I grew up with, but nothing that I actually have studied as a biologist. Um, do you think that the preservatives that we are using are going to have a negative effect? I don't know what the nature of the preservative effect is, but what I do know is that, you know, it's been used in Latin America, it's been used in Africa, it's been used in Asia, and it seems to be working, so I don't see why it wouldn't. And the other aspect that's nice is that you're not infusing the food with the preservative, you're just providing whatever essential oil or aroma the leaves are emanating so that it's keeping the insects away. So I'm sure it does something, but I don't think you are actually consuming it in like large amounts to actually have an effect on the human, right? We also have to remember that we have a very potent digestive system so if there is something that needs to be destroyed in our bodies, I'm sure the stomach acids that do a good job. So, I mean, it would have to be pretty toxic for it not to do it, right? If the babies were to be used on a global level, how do you think it would affect the food waste? How would I think it would affect the food waste? So in terms of food waste, that's a very interesting question because you can think about food waste at many levels. So food waste in the context that you're presenting it, I think of food that actually goes bad and is not usable because it has been infestated with insects, right? And so yes, obviously that food would be not optimal for consumption. But if you have a way, especially this has a lot of applications in rural places where people are buying materials by bulk and they're distributing in their communities and then they have a system for storing. So in that sense, I think it would be a very valuable resource. Do you think that biologists should be focusing on more on issues such as these, especially with many people dealing with world hunger? I think it will have an impact again on the small communities that are living on a day-to-day -day basis on staple foods. Things like corn, sorghum, rice, uh, there's many cereals that are grown that are basically harvested and they use the seed for their own food consumption and for replanting the crop for the next season. So if they have a better, healthier way of keeping the crop that they're going to consume, yes, absolutely, we have to make that. How vital of an issue do you think world hunger is and what steps should a scientist take to I think world hunger is perhaps the biggest problem that we have today and it's actually unfortunate that in the science field it's not taken as seriously as it should be. I think we all know everybody is very worried about curing AIDS, curing cancer, finding a cure for whatever neurological disorders are there, which I'm not saying they're not important, 
But the one thing that is a common thread to all of us, it doesn't matter what color you are, how wealthy you are, is the fact that food supplies in the world are diminishing. Currently, we have 7 billion people in the world, of which 1 billion is suffering from malnutrition. So we have the capacity to feed, feed worldwide 6 billion. And we are already struggling to feed, feed the extra 1 million that we have. It is projected that the population will hit 20 million, like by the 2050 years, right? And so by then, we will definitely be having a crisis trying to feed everybody. And it's unfortunate that there is not enough research um, in plant biology and in agriculture to really try to attempt to solve the crises in agriculture that we're going to have to overcome in order to be able to have enough food for everybody in the planet. So yes, I do think this is a very serious problem and I wish there was more awareness because like I said, everybody is very worried about what malignant disease they're going to die, but nobody's thinking they're going to die due to malnutrition or pretty much starvation because there would be not enough food for us. I don't think that thought has crossed the current person these days. And the last question, do you have any advice or suggestions for our group moving forward? I would like to learn more about how you guys are approaching the question because I think it's a very interesting proposition to use and I think if you guys want to investigate deeper on what is the component or components of the babies that are actually giving the preservative effect, I think you could really further develop and the project and really identify what is the source in the leaf that is giving you that benefit and maybe you can find a different way of making it available to different means. Thank you for having this interview with us.